uh, webinar, which I'm delighted to be able to introduce our first guest speaker, Bob Spence. Bob is a member, a guest member of our business directory, and we'll be making contributions as things develop uh, in our business directory. Bob is a UK-based South African. He's an expert in business development, uh, and particularly from my experience of knowing Bob in networking. A UK-based South African, Bob collaborates with the UK government, uh, the Department for International Trade. He's helping them with webcam exporting. He works with Barclays. He works with Wilkinson Reed Partners solicitors, helping with their networking development. Uh, he, he also works with Deloitte in Central Eastern Europe and PwC. He's a lecturer at Kosminski University in Warsaw, and he's the business development director for C4DI, which is a tech development hub um, and incubator based in Hull. Bob's got an interesting uh, icebreaker for us today. So those of you that are watching live, get your smartphone ready. And now I'm going to pass over to Bob, who's going to give you the content for today. Well, thanks for that uh, introduction, uh, Ross, and it's my uh, pleasure uh, to be talking to you all uh, today, either live or on the recording. And uh, this session, it's going to be about uh, communication strategies using the webcam. So it could be that you're not involved in uh, business development or, 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 or sales, so some of the concepts may uh, not immediately resonate with you, but believe you me, uh, in the new normal, when you're talking through a webcam, you kind of are selling because you, you're trying to keep people's attention. So I'm going to do a screen share now, and we're going to have a we're going to spend about 30 minutes going through some ideas. And I've also uh, would like you to have your phones uh, ready because we're going to run a, a bit of a quiz. We're going to have a, run a bit of a quiz. So let's just uh, start off with uh, some slides. So let's have a let's have a look at what we've got here. And uh, right, you should see some uh, you should see some slides there. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it's communication tactics in the new normal. I'm sure, like me, you're probably getting tired of this, you know, concept of the new normal. But it's something that we can't avoid uh, discussing. Um, just a, a piece of information before we go into a, into using the phones. Uh, I was reading some information by Dr. Philippa Lally, Dr. Philippa Lally, and it's worth looking up, actually. Uh, she did some terrific work around habits. How long does it take to form a habit? So those of you that might be thinking this is all going to go back to the way that it was before, it's worth looking at her uh, white paper because uh, her and her team came up with the concept that it takes 66 days to create a habit. Now, uh, I don't know how many people are, are, are using uh, Skype, Zoom, uh, go to meeting, uh, Google Hangout, WebEx, or whatever. I, I don't know. But what I can tell you, what I can tell you is if you go on to uh, Amazon and you look at the three, the three top webcams, the three top webcams that you can buy, okay, by the way that they're ranked by consumer experience, they're not available. They're all sold out. And I think that tells us that uh, this webcam uh society that we're involved in for professionals and, and, and people in commerce it, it's kind of here to stay so i don't think it's going to necessarily reboot back so let's let's get into this um introducing myself there if you want to hook up with me on linkedin I, I do publish things around this but that's my linkedin profile you'll see that i'm a john robert spence uh, the only person that calls me john bob is my mom uh, everyone knows me as Bob, but if you are looking for me on LinkedIn, I'm a John R. Spence. That's me. So let's go to our phones. Let's do that. And look at menti.com. Yeah, menti.com. So if you put in your phone, menti.com, it comes up as a Mentimeter. And as that comes up, you put in there a code. And you can see the code on the screen there. The code is 174436. 
and you submit that and you should be connected to the you should be connected in now what i'm going to do is swap the screen from a, a powerpoint to mentimeter so let's have a look at that guy and uh, so far uh, there's two people that have engaged and and the point of getting involved with this i'm going to share with you some information around communications okay that's what i'm going to share with you so I've got a, a couple of people involved in it now. Okay, I'll give it one more minute because I, I understand not everybody likes to play, but I'm going to share with you some information that could be quite interesting to you. All right. So let's um, let's make a start and uh, let's go. So let's have a look at the first the first uh, question. So I look at your phone. Yeah, now this is quite interesting. It's about people giving introductions. So what percentage of customers in the new normal will give a referral, will refer you? So have a have a shot at the answer to that. So we're in the new normal. So are people prepared to introduce people? Let's have a little look at that. And our time's up. And there's a few people. Now, hey, look at that. Now, where that information uh, comes from, um, salesforce.com, and currently... Nine out of 10 people are prepared to introduce people. So that's something to consider in terms of if you're looking to expand your network of connections. And I can tell you that DMU is a superb environment to build connections. So let's go on to the, the next one. So what have we got next? And the situation that we've got, nobody got a result on that one. Okay. Let's go for the next. So what's the next question going to be? What percentage of people prefer to stick with someone they know? So if you think of your business or professional um, occupation, start thinking about in this current new normal, what, what's the situation on that? When people are looking to buy something, what percentage prefer it's someone they already know? And you, you can see it's, it's a pretty high figure. That's 73%. 73%. So let's see what's cooking with that. And where are we now? Okay, I think I think we got someone out in front front there. Donnie. Danny, Donnie. Um so we, we, ha we have someone in front there, someone who's got their finger on the pulse, which clearly isn't me. <laughs> All right, let's try the next one. So use your phone for this. So you got you got things around, uh, around LinkedIn. This is really about LinkedIn. So if you're trying to connect with someone in the current new normal, what does that figure look like? Now, that this information comes from RAIN, an organization called RAIN. But, okay, so let's see what's happening here. And wow, look at that. In this current environment, people generally are not ignoring people. Generally, we're all in the same boat. I don't know if it's appropriate to call it the Dunkirk spirit, but we've got no movement there. So, Donnie, you're still in front. Donnie or Danny. So what have we got next? What's the likelihood of a buyer connecting with you from an introduction? So what, what is it? Two times, three times? Okay, I know what I'm going to go for. This information came from Gartner. Gartner, a big data organization. Gartner. Okay, we've got five seconds left. That's it, two, one. So what's the figure? There you go. Five times as likely to connect with you in the current... Uh, pandemic covid whatever you want to call it so what's happening now okay okay so Don, don is still there but the barefoot contessa is making the way up and clippy isn't so far out so what have we got next what percent okay that that's kind of interesting because the, the answer came up before the question uh it's probably like a South African version of Mentimeter. We always do things the wrong way around. 
I've just done that as a as a special treat just to show that uh okay so Russell's there but it looks pretty much like Donnie's well in front there and we've got a we kind of got a winner so the the point, the point of me doing that apart from to show you that I don't know how to use uh menti is in this current moment if we're talking about communication uh, per se um generally people are much more uh, open much more open to communication so whether it's uh someone you already know they're more likely to recommend you um if it's a satisfied customer they're more likely to introduce you um if it's someone that you've reached out to they're more likely to take it as, as something positive and i think that's something uh, in this current crisis if you remember the words of winston churchill never let a crisis go to waste never let a crisis go to waste so i think at this moment it's a great time to be reaching out to people so let's have a look at uh, communication skills within this context let's have a look within this context so this information comes from the southern hemisphere and i'll just explain why it comes from the southern hemisphere so Let's have a look at the difference between the Southern Hemisphere and England. Yeah, there's 432 people per square mile in England. So if you didn't know that, you do now. And then we're going to have a look at where I'm from. And you can see South Africa, 48 people per square mile. And if we go even a bit further, Australia. And I think what happened, it's true to say that when Skype first came out, certainly in South Africa, everybody jumped on it pretty much immediately. And my good friend, Martin Byrne, and I know he's not on this call, but I always give him a shout out. He did a lot of business development between uh, New Zealand and Australia. Everybody jumped on this because of, of distance. So if you're looking to find communication models that are up to date, this is one of the few times I could say to you, South Africa and Australia are the places to look for the right information. Now, these here, I accept that not everyone on this call is, is in sales as a profession, but those are reckoned to be the top 12 selling styles. So I'm always thinking, well, selling styles, communication styles. So you may be familiar with some of those. It could be that by default, you are using these already and, uh, there's good news and bad news. The good news is that they're tried and tested. The bad news is not one of these was designed for the webcam. So anyone that invested in the Sandler selling system last year, and it's around about £1,700 a person, so that's my plug for Sandler, uh, none of it's designed for the webcam. And for those of you that bought into the Challenger sales system, and they only... Uh, do corporate sales and it comes in at around about 19,000 pounds. It's not designed for this as well. So yeah. Yeah. So we've got all these different selling systems. Consultative selling works through a camera. Solution selling works through a camera. And so does value selling. So if you're looking to communicate with a customer, potential client, or you're looking to make a point at all, you are actually selling. You, you are actually communicating to sell. So those are the three that still work, okay? Those are the three that still work. If anyone is on the call that's anything to do with Challenger or Sandler, please, please, please don't, don't, don't sue me for saying that. It's something I read in Forbes. So go and, go, go and sue them. <laughs> so what's the, what's the problem? The problem with communication now is you, you kind of got to get through this barrier. You've got to attract people's attention. And the way to get someone's interest is by being relevant. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about for the next 20 minutes is surfboards. But one, I doubt if anyone on this call is into surfing apart from me. I think it's a, it's a long shot. I know Lester's well known for its surfing community. Not. And also, I doubt if there's anyone on the call that would think it's relevant communication tactics and talking about surfboards. So what you have to do is compete with this. Yeah. The, the point where you become relevant has moved. 
You've got to fight a lot more to be relevant, to be interesting. And the reason that's happened is because we we're kind of no longer hanging out. We're spending so much time behind a PC. Um, the old search engine optimizations are now on overload. And there's so much information coming towards us. Now, I don't exactly know uh, where uh, uh, these figures, how these figures were created. I do know that they came from Harvard. So if you trust what Harvard say, uh, they're saying that in the 70s in the United States, uh, the average person was seeing 500 ads a day. So how they did that, please don't put that in the chat box. I can't imagine they're going around, you know, clicking things. Oh, there's an advert. There's an advert. Oops, you listen to a radio advert. But but the information, it, it's 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 been credited, accredited. Oh, we're well past that now. I mean, even today, you know, you you, you fire up your 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 PC and there's all kinds of things being fired at you. And lordy lordy, if you're looking at a news channel, goodness me, the amount of information. Um, I watch uh, South African news and CNN and, and like every five minutes there's about 20 commercials. So everyone's been bombarded with information. So when you're trying to communicate through the webcam, you might say, well, I'm not really communicating that. Well, actually you are because everyone's on like overload. Very few people have got the bandwidth to take new information in. I'm sorry to say. So how does this look? Well, the thing that I do, and Russell was very kind to refer to it, I specialize in business development. And um, so communication skills for business development is very, very important. And there's lots of different things that you're going to need to do. And these slides here, I think I'm going to come back to this, but I want to bring it to your attention now. And I'm going to come back to it and it's going to make sense. So get ready. I've showed you something. I'm going to explain it afterwards. All right. So let's have a look. So what we've got that before the COVID, what was happening was people meet each other. OK, I'm sure you've met people, whether that's at chamber meetings, networking events or the terrific events that the DMU uh, ran before the COVID. Um, so people introduce each other, don't they? How are you? What are you doing? What's your story? And then people drop in their credentials. This is me. I'm Bob Spence. And, you know, this is what I'm doing. And then. If you're in sales, you kind of get involved in the client's needs. Now, generally, if you're trying to connect with someone, you, you need to see their point of view. So it's the same thing. OK, it's kind of what floats their boat. Um, if you're in sales, you start talking about your approach to solve a client's needs. And then you start explaining why they should work with you. And then you start talking about the downside of things. And then you start saying, well, wouldn't it be great to do business? So. In terms of communication, this is pretty much how uh, we, we communicate, okay? That's pretty much how we communicate. Now, you may not be involved in sales or business development, but kind of if, if you are doing anything commercially or professionally, you're going to have to get a lot better at this because there are people that are good at this, okay? So let's have a look at what's going on. You see, what's happened now, you've got this, oh, here we go again, the new normal. We've got the new normal and the old normal, okay? Now, the new normal, we were meeting people. And uh, I know he won't be on the call because he'll still be asleep because he lives in Los Angeles. But probably one of the best communicators I've been privileged you know, to work with is, 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 a, is, a, is a pal of mine. I won't, I won't uh, drop his name on this call. It's not appropriate. But he, he used to work with me at Coots Bank. We, we were business development guys at Coots Bank, the Strand. That's right, Coots Bank, the Strand. But he was the best guy. And the things that he had going for him, he's six foot two. And I'm, I'm like five foot seven, and that's on a good day. Um, he kind of looked like Timothy Dalton, and I clearly don't. You remember Timothy Dalton, James Bond? So you got a guy that's yeah. over six foot, looks a bit like Timothy Dalton. And to make matters worse, he kind of got a bit of a Richard Burton thing going on with his voice. You know, that great sonorous Shakespearean uh, method of, of using the English language. And quite clearly, I don't possess that. Uh, I, I sound on a bad day more like Paul Hogan. So you kind of got a six foot guy who looks a bit like James Bond, sounds like Richard Burton. And he's a very, very charming guy. So if he's doing meeting people he's got all those assets all those terrific assets presence charisma charm use of language uh, great eye contact um 
all of that's pretty much most of that's gone now. So through a webcam, I look the same size as he does. <laughs> I still don't look like Timothy Dalton, but I don't think through a, a webcam, he looks so much like Timothy Dalton. You just got like his, his head there. He's still got a bit of a Richard Burton thing going on, but it, it's kind of lost a lot of its Im impact to be fair. So with this presentation here, you got to start thinking, well, what are my assets? And when you meet someone, which is the introduction, how does that impact? So when you're talking to someone, how does that impact? And you've got, you can see two things. You've got how it looks through a webcam and how it's received. And what's happening, there's kind of like an oscillation going on. Can you see that oscillation? Yeah, I, I, it. You, you kind of got this mismatch of, well, this is what I would do if we were in a room. So I guess I'm going to do the same thing through a camera. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's no evidence that it works whatsoever. It's the same as if you were talking to someone through a telephone, you don't use the English language the same way that when you're with them face to face, because when you're with someone face to face, you've got all these other cues to work with, what their body language looks like, what their posture looks like, their engagement, their tenor, their tone. You, you can read somebody, but when you're through a webcam, mostly it's static uh, headshots. So it's pretty, pretty difficult. So that kind of methodology of communicating to somebody in a first meeting, because this is pretty much about communication tactics in a first meeting, that was not designed to work through a webcam. Just as those sales models I spoke to you about earlier were not designed to go through a webcam. And for those of you, and I'm sure you have, that have been on Toastmasters and all these terrific public speaking courses, they were not designed to work through a webcam. For those of you that have been on calls, how to sound professional on a telephone, and I hold it my hand, that doesn't mean you're going to work it on a webcam. The webcam is a completely different environment, and it's the new normal. You've got to be good on the phone. You've got to be good face-to-face, -face, and now you've got to be good on camera. Oh, boy. So let's have a look. What does that mean? Yeah. I'm going to talk you through this, and it's just food for thought. And it's pretty much about first meetings, okay? So it's communication tactics for a first meeting. So let's have a go at this. So in the past, we would introduce people. And the thing is, well, people aren't that bothered. Now, if you look at this little model, we've got the start and finish, which is the timeline. So if you see the timeline, okay, and we've got, is this information being received positively or negatively? So you can see here with the introduction, it's kind of above the line. It's kind of positive because people are, are on a webcam. OK, what's going to happen? What is going to happen? But when it starts happening and, and you start saying, well, this is me. This is what I do. Yada, yada, bada, bing, bada, bong. It's all good stuff. Mostly through a webcam, it all kind of sounds the same stuff, like the same stuff, really. You know, it's like every LinkedIn profile you've ever seen. It's all kind of the same. Then what happens when you talk to them about what they're interested in, it goes up. And here's something when you're on a webcam call, get people talking to you. That's the thing. So when you're talking, it kind of goes down. But when they're talking, it goes up. So get them talking about what they're into what kind of needs they've got or where they're going or what things are happening to them. If you're in sales and you start talking about, well, this is the way we do stuff through a webcam, that kind of really sexy, hot presentation you've got on PowerPoint. Nah, it doesn't work so well. Actually, the longer you talk about you, that's right. The longer we talk, you talk about you, it's negative. You're into the negative. You're into the debit. Now, you can pull it back up. Now, you, you can have some lighter content to rebuild the rapport. I would say anecdotes about things that you've done for people similar to them. That, that's what I would do, anecdotes. The use of humor, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, it could work. It might not work. It's unlikely through a webcam. People are going to openly laugh. And if you've asked people to mute their microphones while you're doing something, it, it, it just sounds so so empty and, and, and yeah, 
Yeah. Then, boom. Answering difficult questions through a webcam. You've really got to look at if anyone's going to ask you a difficult question. Now, most of us know what difficult questions are. Like when I'm training people, the most difficult question is, well, can you guarantee results? If we hire you, can you guarantee that our guys will be better on a webcam? Now, I know that's coming. I would say this to you. And, and if I can say this, I don't vote in this country. So anyone from the tax office, I do pay tax, but I don't vote. So I don't have any political persuasion. I, I need to say that because of what I'm about to say. We've all watched on the BBC where they've invited politicians from every corner of the house to talk into a camera about COVID and most recently the educational crisis with exam results. And I've got to say, I think most of the politicians have, have done a really poor job. Um, it doesn't really matter what your politics are. Uh, people are using language that the layman won't understand. Uh, either side are kind of evasive. Um, the eye contact's not quite right. And, and they, you know, our politicians are paid. They're paid to communicate with us, whether they're in office or not in office. So I, I think you, you look at it, difficult questions can sound very, very um, – that can sound very powerful and you can sound evasive unless you're prepared to engage with difficult questions. So what I would do, if you're having meetings with people and you know you're going to have a difficult question, I would practice it and record yourself through a webcam how it sounds. That's what I would do. Now, you can kind of pull it back up by talking about if it's a sale, your reputation, what you do, the kind of clients you've got. But usually, and I don't think you can see that, um, as soon as you start talking about anything to do with money through a webcam, it it, it, it just doesn't sound so good. It, it really doesn't. And you can kind of pull it back up by saying stuff like, yeah, and you can hear it goes down like a bomb because we're barely above the positive line. It, it really doesn't work. So this is just a basic method of how to make a first meeting uh, perform better. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, this the peak end rule. And it's written, it was written by uh, a lecturer called Daniel Hahnemann. Hahnemann. You're probably surprised I can pronounce that because I can procne Afrikaans. So look at that. DMU have brought you someone that's bilingual. Yeah, look at that. No expense spared. So Daniel Hahnemann, the peak end rule. And what Mr. Hahnemann said was that people remember the peak and the end of a communication segue, okay? Now, the peak can be something that's really high or something that's really low, but it won't be the average. So, for example, those of you that have got a great introduction, you know, you've got a great anecdote or you, um, I don't know, when you meet someone, you've got a well-worn joke that you crack. Great. It doesn't have any impact through a webcam. It will be long gone. Uh, those of you that have got a brilliant PowerPoint presentation where the first slide makes people go, wow, by the end of the <laughs> webcam, it will be, oh, yeah, that. It doesn't work. So you've got to look at what's the peak and the end, the peak and the end, which in sales, it's kind of different, isn't it, those of you that, that are in business development, because you want to get the good news right at the start to engage with people. Well, now you have to rethink that. Yeah. So how does this look? Oh, boy. It doesn't look too good. So in the space of five minutes or 10 minutes, Russell, I am going to energize how this looks. And this is brought to you by DMU for Life. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. It's called the four-act approach. And I can only go through this very, very, very quickly. It is quite a complex uh, model, and uh, obviously I can't show you that in, in the space of five or ten minutes, but I'm hoping it will give you a starting point that you need to reconsider how you're doing stuff. Now, what is the four-act process? Is it a sales process? No, it's nothing to do with sales, nothing to do with sales whatsoever. Where this comes from, the four-act approach is every movie you've ever seen. Uh, James Bond. Star Wars, uh, The Hobbit, uh, it doesn't apply to Shakespeare, 
and it doesn't apply to Tolstoy, no. So it it but it's basically mo movies. Four act approach. So if you if you if you use your browser and put in the four act approach uh, movies, it'll come up. So essentially, how it works is this: through a camera, you have to buy into what someone needs right from the word go. So if someone's talking to you through the camera about anything, are you engaging with their needs? Are you engaging with the needs of the person? It doesn't have to be a sales call. It can be a client or a prospect or just someone you're hooking up with. You've got to engage with their need and show them immediately you're prepared to engage with the things that they need. Then if it is a sales call or it's business development or a client, you need to reinforce that you can, your approach this is how it works. The fit is surprise, surprise. Our approach is a perfect fit for your need. What a surprise. You need to communicate that. So forget benefits, needs, cost analysis, return on investment. Womp, womp, womp. It's gone. You're not going to get that over the line in a webcam call. You're not. So give it a rethink. And finally, you need to think about how you communi communicate your value in the middle of this pandemic, because the biggest thing people are thinking about now is doing nothing. Yeah. Most people are waiting to see what happens. And that's the thing you got to get over the line, which I will come back to. Look at that. If we've got time. So how's it work? Well, at the start, you start talking about your position. And you notice that Russell at the start of this, you could say it was credentials, but it's kind of if the United Kingdom Department of International Trade have hired me to help exporters use the webcam, it's a starter for it's a starter for ten. I wasn't the only person they could have hired. I can assure you. So you might be thinking, well, there couldn't have been many people, maybe, but I, I got the work. So you need you need to establish very very early on if you want anyone to listen to you on through a camera. Um, the next thing you need you need to talk about well what's what's the what's the proof. Not the professional proof, but what's the proof that we, we can get on, get along through a webcam to do this? So what you need now is testimonials that talk about how good you are at a distance because you're going to have to separate yourself from everyone else now. Briefly, rather than have a sales presentation that ends with a big bang, you need a presentation where there's lots of benefits. There's multiple peaks why someone should hire you. You need to use their language. Um, you know, you, you can get their language from their website. It's not that difficult. You can get the mission statement from their website. So you can talk through the webcam about their mission statement. Presumptive closing. Well, that means stuff like this. Well, uh, when you hire me, this is the benefit case I bring. Or um, after you've issued the purchase order, I'll be delighted to do this, this and this. Or um, when we start working together, this is what I'll do. You need to paint pictures of what it's going to be like working with you. Um, I, I use screenshots and things. I just show people, look, this is what it's like if you work with me. And uh, if it's not for you, well, look, this is what it's like. Contrast bias. Contrast bias, you need to master that. It's the difference between doing something and not doing something. So even a clean shave costs a beard. You need to think, think about the contrast of using you or not using you. You need to work out how to communicate that. You need to talk about your hidden value. Everybody's got a hidden value in this pandemic. And I think a lot of people, especially DMU, the real hidden value for being part of DMU is the terrific network the university has. It's world class. It's world class network of connections. Um, it could be that people study at DMU for that um, network. But I think people generally select a university for the quality of the degree, which again with DMU, it's world class. But in this moment, the network of connections DMU possesses will give you professionally a major advantage. That's something to think about, isn't it? And then if you're going to do business with somebody, you need to give them multiple options. And if you do that, you, you're going to get applause at the end of it. You are. Now, let me just go back. I'll go back very, very quickly to something because I can see on the time. I've got time to do it, Russ. And uh, look at that, you see. Slides were put in at the wrong point. Can you believe me? You just can't hot get the people these days. That's the problem with the COVID. So let's have a look. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, look at that. 
I did that pretty quick. I mean, come on. So what is multiple options? Okay, how this works, it's as old as Father Time. It even happens in Hull, this. So it's about restaurants. I know some of you on the call are going to go, restaurants? Hull? Hull? Restaurants? There are restaurants in Hull. I know you're going to find it hard to believe. You go into a restaurant, any maitre d' worth his weight in gold will do this. You'll say, have you got a wine list? All right. You will. So he might have the wine list. And if he's any good, he'll show you the wine list and he'll, he'll actually say, do you want white or red? And you, uh, so I say, oh, I'll go white, white wine. And he'll now he won't say to me, we've got this Pinot Grigio. What he'll say to me is, well, we've got the house white, which is seven pounds for a carafe. We've got this Pinot Grigio, which is very popular, which is 18 pounds. And we've got this Chablis, which is from our cellar, which is 44 pounds. Now, you know where he's going. He's giving me something cheap and something more expensive. And he knows that I'm going to go with the middle one. You do this yourselves. Bronze, silver, gold. Nobody picks the bronze. The gold's quite expensive. I'll go with the silver. So that's what it means. And the facts are this. If you offer somebody one option, there's only a one in 10 likelihood they'll go with it because you're basically saying do this or nothing. And do nothing is attractive to 91% of people. By the way, these figures are all proven. You can, you, If you go onto contrast bias, there's papers and papers and papers. So these aren't my figures based on buying wine in Hull. <laughs> I'll be spending a long time trying to get data from there, I can assure you. And then what you have is if there's three options, A, B, and C, because three is the magic number, it then means that 32% go for the offer that's A, and 34% go for the middle. So it, it, it's all about packaging your arguments. So what we've got here, you can see the different models that I'm talking about. Don't just assume that what went well face-to-face -face is going to work well through a webcam. There's no evidence that it does. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that things that were designed to work through a webcam are going to be the same as things that were designed to work face-to-face. -face. It's just not so. Um, I want to bring Russell back in in about two minutes. Um, just for the record, those of you on the call that are involved in export, then this is a series of webinars that I'm doing for the uh, UK DIT. And the, the first one's on September the 3rd, I think. But if you look at Business is Great, you can see that the UK DIT have already funded that. So it's understanding video call culture. So that's that. And if you are interested in this, I've got a white paper that's coming out at the end of September, which is the business development guide for the COVID era, which is rainmaking. And that is me. So, Russell, uh, if I can bring you in and uh, we'll see if there's any any questions, because I love questions, Russell, you know that. Yeah, I know you do, Bob. Well, I've got uh, a couple of questions here that have come in. Um, and the first one, Bob, is what are the biggest differences you've noticed in webcam communication? Okay. I think the, the, the biggest, the biggest, the where well, it's been the biggest challenge isn't on a one on one call where you and I are talking like this. Because in this kind of call, the pair of us can kind of mug it, you know? The real challenge, uh, 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 Russ, and, we, and we've been doing, and C40I has been doing research on this, yeah. is when there's a call where it's me and there's two at your end. So the challenge is that I'm speaking to you and will. Because what happens, I mean, this our current relationship was a, is a joint project, but generally it's very easy for that to sound adversarial through a webcam, even if it isn't. And the problem is, that when we think of webcam technology, I've got to look at you, then I've got to look at Will, then I should be looking into the camera, and I should also be making notes. And there are tactics that you can adopt, which we haven't got time for today, but I think the, the biggest change has been that meetings that are one to two, if they're not organized uh, effectively, 
they don't perform very well. And, I, and I'm sure there's people on a call that know that they've been on poor calls and, and, and aren't really sure why that is. If you've got more than four people on a call, Russell, and you yeah. don't know what you're doing, that is DEFCON 3. Because then you've got two people on each side. It becomes very adversarial. Everyone's looking at each other and looking into the camera and making notes. You cannot read what's going on. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And and it's it's interesting that we've all been thrown into this scenario where we're using video calls for meetings, team meetings, uh, discussions with people. Uh, and nobody's nobody's been trained for it. We're all learning as we go along. So anything that you can give us uh, to help is is useful. Uh, which brings me to the next question, which is what tips have you got that can make a difference, you know, make a real difference to what we're doing? Well, I think the first thing is we, we didn't do it on this call because it wasn't appropriate. But let, let's say me, you and, and, and Will were going to have a first call and we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you need to do is induct everyone onto the technology. So, for example, I use Zoom a lot. So the first thing is that when I go onto a Zoom call, I don't assume that the person that I'm talking to knows how to use Zoom. So I've got like five or six slides that say, look, there's the chat box. You can put a thumbs up there. If you click on that, it'll tell me to speed up. If you click yeah. on that, it'll tell me to slow down. It, it you've, you've hit the nail on the head with your earlier remark that we haven't been trained how to, how to do this. But induct people into your technology, double check that they're comfortable with it. Yeah. And by doing that, Russ, it's almost like the bit that we had before when we used to meet people where I used to meet you, you'd have to sign me in. We'd have a little chat as we were going into the boardroom. We'd have a further chat when you're getting me a coffee. Well, that's gone. All yeah. that happens is cameras open up, bang, we're there. Yes. So I think, Russ, uh, the biggest tip I could give anyone is make sure the person on the call knows how to use the technology. And the second point, and I'll make it the final one, because I, I could talk for an hour about this, man, is get everybody on a call to use the chat box yeah the key to the webcam is the use of the chat box and, and i just by the way if anyone's saying well where do you get that from um where i got that is a sales trainer in australia who sells software into hong kong and china who's been doing sales calls through uh, the webcam for about 10 years so i'm getting my information from people that have been doing this 10 years i'm not that interested in a a, a trainer that's that's not you know is new to this mm -hmm. so the chat box is the key russ the chat box get people chatting get people comfortable with the technology those are the biggest tips i could give in the time yeah. we've got. and and just and just as, as a last question what have you noticed uh, a difference in email usage and, and how emails are used. Oh, yeah. That's a great question who's ever put that one in. Um, okay, what's happened? Emails are getting longer and longer and longer. Now, now, I can't prove this for the UK, and maybe it's something that De Montfort can investigate if it's the right thing to do. But uh, as you know, I do stuff for UCLA, uh, not in the COVID. They did some research, and it wasn't a huge sample, Russell. It was only about 200 companies. Um, but it, it was about the volume of text in an email before COVID and now. So it's to do with volume of text. So what's happening, because me, you and Will can no longer have a what I would call in South Africa a water cooler conversation, or it might mm -hmm. be a vending machine conversation or whatever's the vernacular. We, me and you no longer have those little conversations we'd have before. So what happens now? People are sending longer and longer emails. Now, according to UCLA, that they found the figure was 129%. So the number of words in May 2019 is 29%, sorry, May 2020 is 29% more than May 2019. Wow. It's quite considerable. It's more than a quarter. Mm -hmm. So our attention spans are being hammered. People are writing longer and longer emails. Now, who on this call has been trained to effectively write long emails? I know I haven't. No. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's so. So what's happening 
people, rather than get better on the webcam or get better doing stuff like this, people are sending more and more emails. They're copying more and more people in as if that is effective communication, which it is not. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone on the call, you need to look at your email style. You need to, as, as well as your webcam style and start thinking about, you know, does everyone need copying in? And also, is it, it you know, let's say I said to you, Russell, we're going to send a lot of emails over the next two weeks. Do you mind if I use bullet points? Is that OK with you? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't write in bullet points, but that's more effective than me just writing longer and longer emails to you thinking, Christ, Bob, I just haven't got time to read this, mate. I just don't have time to digest this. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's that came from UCLA, and I've got no reason to believe that De Montfort would come up with different information. I've got no reason to believe that. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's about it. If there are no more questions, I'd just like to say on behalf of uh, DMU for Life and the business directory, thank you very much, Bob, for that very illuminating uh, talk. Uh, and the video will be available online on the YouTube channel. Uh, and with that, let's draw things to a close. Thank you very much, Bob. And my pleasure.